Okay class, today we are going to make a sheet planter. I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, we're making a sheet planter, but you know, me calling you class. Okay. Um, we're making a sheet planter, a planter, you know, um, a container that you put your plants in, whether inside or outside in, but the planter is going to look like a sheep. Why are we doing that? Because it's cute. <laughs> but I traced out um, our little sheep. So on this one is, let me see, can you see it? Oh, there we are. See, his little head, all so cute. <laughs> and this one is his, oh gosh, come on, focus here. Hello, focus. You can't really, you know how people put that. <laughs> you can't do that beside a whole sheet. Let me see. Uh, there we go. Um... What is this? Oh yeah, here we go. That's his body. It's his front end and his back end. So exactly the same. It doesn't come out exactly the same because I'm going to be doing this on my scroll saw and it's, you might as well say it's by hand and that's how it is. And these, these two on this sheet, oh, can you see? This one here is his tail and this is his muff. That little fluffy part on his forehead, which will make him 3D. Okay. We also oh, we have here also some little buttons. Um, I think they're like yeah, they're buttons, but they're going to be his little eyes. Let me show you one of them. I know you might can't see, but it has this little. Can you see? I. Can, I don't even have my glasses on because I can't tell if you can see this or not. I think you can. <laughs> but anyway, with some pliers or something, you can break off this little loop, which if you were sewing this onto a shirt or something, you could just break it off really easily. But still, there's like this residual piece left. So I'm going to use my handy dandy rotary tool to kind of sand or burn that off. And I got this rotary tool really cheap from um, Harbor Freight. Oh gosh, I got the wrong, the wrong package. I wanted to show you my rotary tool. I guess we'll, I'll show you when we get there. But anyway, I already cut out the wood. I mean, I already traced my, what I do is, let me show you. Like for example, with his head, I would lay some carbon paper under this, place it against the wood. Here's a slab of wood I have. And I would trace it, I put a carbon paper under it, tape it down, trace onto it, so the drawing would come out on the wood, which is what it is now. Let me see, there you go, see that? And I did each piece. See, this is his, you may not, you may be able to see or not, it doesn't matter, you know what I'm talking about by now. So this front and back ends are, are traced onto here. I've already used my scroll saw to cut out his muff <laughs> and his tail. He's got a big tail, doesn't he? And these pieces, there's four longer pieces here and two shorter, slightly shorter pieces here. With these, I'm going to split them down the middle, the very center of each which will make them eight pieces, which are going to be the sides of our planter box. These are going to be the base of it. So if you put a flower pot inside the planter, it'll rest on these. And that's what these are. So, and just in case, I know you know, but just in case you don't know, this is carbon paper, which I picked up from um, either Hobby Lobby or Michaels, one of those. I'm sure you could also order it on Amazon, but this is the carbon paper I got. You remember the old, the olden days of carbon paper. I, I don't know what you would use it for, but that's what it is. And so, so, um, so right now I'm going to draw a line down the middle of this, and then we're going to move over to the scroll saw and just split them in half because
tool I got from um, Harbor Freight. It's a little cheap little thing. And I think it was like uh, 15 or $20. And here's the little eyeball uh, button. Let me see. Okay, so I'm just gonna try to cut off this little piece with these little pliers. It just basically snaps right off, as you can see. But let me see if I can show you. There's this little kind of leftover raised, see, there it is, a raised bit. And that would not make, allow the little eyeball to, to stay very well once you glue it onto the sheep's face. So I like to kind of gnaw it down with my rotary tool. So I'm just going to try to sand it down a little bit. very very flat okay here's what I forgot to show you I had this into one piece it was an even shorter piece than this one and these long bars it was one of these that I couldn't have because it needs to be the support here and let me show you <clears throat> it's going to go here and be the, it's going to support the base of the, um, the basket. So it'll be here like this. You know, a good thing you can also use for this for, you could use with this, instead of this regular pine wood, you can use um, treated wood. And you can actually make this out of fence post wood. I'm going to screw in the, the middle pieces. Basically, again, we're just going to spread them out because they can be gapped at the bottom because you're not going to have a plant in a base that's <laughs> so, so small that it falls through. <laughs> Even my little... My little cactus I purchased today doesn't fall through. That's, this is not the kind of plant I'm putting in there. I'm just being silly. <laughs> it's not, you know, that would be way too big. But we're, we're having this gap about, um, I don't know, two, uh, an inch and a half apart, an inch and a half apart between the two. But within the screws on the base, within them, not on the outside, because you don't want to drive your screw down and then hit that screw that's already in there for the base. What I'm going to do now is hold it in place and make a pencil mark where I want to do the holes. going to attach the head now the head can be um, I mean I, what I did was I put the head under here and then I, br I balanced the body with the muff underneath the feet for now but we're going to attach the head now I don't mind all the screws showing everywhere except I don't like it showing behind behind the um, head here and right here where I will be putting um, the muff and I don't like it where it shows um, inside where the tail is. So, so I'm going to sink those a little lower than um, than the surface so that I can uh, so I can cover them up with wood glue.
What I like to do as far as the tail is I like to position it so that the tip of it, the tip of it is out past his butt cheek. So I like to do it right there. And uh, I, I think I like to glue it because I'm only going to do one position. So what I do is, oops, I position it and use the pencil so I know where to place it. There, so I put the glue on and I can put it back where I had it. to let you know or it was that when you first put paint on a bare wood surface when the paint dries it can dry kind of rough to the touch so you want to give it a light sanding um, you want to give it a light sanding so I'm gonna try to do this gently to smooth out this surface because it feels really rough to the touch without I'm gonna try to do it without taking off the paint what I'm gonna do is put this tracing on his head and I try to just most important is to line up the sides of his face you know and the base of his face doesn't have to be perfectly positioned but it's pretty easy. And I just hold it down here once. Oh, I guess I should put this carbon paper under here. And I just hold it down and just quickly pencil in his face. Let's see, see there. So. I'm actually going to go inside the circles here, just in case the buttons are not exact, same size. So I'm just going to, and it doesn't have to be perfect because what I'm hoping for is that the circle is um, covered up. And then we'll, we'll trace out his nostrils. Since we're going to use a black paint pen for his nostrils, I'm gonna go exactly where my drawing is. There, see? <clears throat> it says, yeah, here it is. Right here, it says paint. 
and I'm not sure, but I think I bought it from Walmart. I don't know how much I bought it for. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's go over here. And the first time I did his nostrils, like I said, I didn't remember that I had a black Sharpie paint pen. So I used paintbrush and paintbrush to me is just so so challenging to for the control I mean you know <clears throat> if I mess up too bad I could always paint over it 